Ladies and gentlemen, back to the Grill Out, episode 53. I'm your host, Hollywood, Jeff Petty, and I'm joined by my co-host, the current reigning and defending That's right. Grill Out Predictions champion, Josh Cole. Bay Bay. Yeah. Yeah, no Jason today. Yeah. Yeah. He's he he goes off on these undisclosed locations with him and the and the baddie and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happens. Off the grid. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I get. I just get a text that says off the grid and and then that's it. <laughs> that's that's all that I get. Yeah. So one year for the grill out. Technically, the previous episode was the uh, one-year anniversary, yeah. sort of. But this one, new format today. We're going to end this segment. We'll get there, but we'll end this segment with On This Day in Wrestling History. We will end the next segment with the main event and then our final thoughts in the final little bit of the show. If you have not had a chance to go check out the Grill Out Hot Tag, we are talking about yeah. the infamous... Muda scale. It's a new year. It yes, is. It is. It is. It's a new day. <laughs> yes, it is. So yeah, make sure you go out and check that. It is. It's being uploaded at the yeah. very same time as this. So you, you know, if you want to listen to it right after this, go ahead. If you've already listened to it, thank you. Email us thegrail at ninety five at gmail dot com and let us know what you think or message us on Facebook. If you want to save it for later in the week, by all means, do yeah. what you want. Speaking of New Day, it's uh, not a new day for Odyssey Jones. We didn't cover that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that was uh, an interesting story. Yeah. In, uh, Odyssey Jones, yeah. We didn't we didn't cover that one too yeah. much. Um, there was just there, – there was um, – that one was pretty cut and dry, but yeah. it was just very, uh, very quick. Yeah. Odyssey Jones has been released by WWE. They never put in an official statement, but yeah, he's just – he's gone. <laughs> yeah, he's just – well, that's true. There was never an, an yeah. official statement put out. Um, they took him off of the roster. Mm-hmm. So he you just know. disappeared, and they've like never referenced it since. It's been like what two or three weeks now. Pretty much, yeah. he's just like like he was never there. Yeah, <laughs> so it's crazy because he was in a kind of a big story too. Ex- exactly, like he was. We even covered that a little bit yeah. with him in the in the new day yeah. and whatnot. And now he is a he's gone. Yeah, poof. You'd say he got the SmackDown. He did, and I'm glad you said that. And speaking of SmackDown <laughs> and new SmackDown has a new logo and opening. Not this past. Was it this past yep. Friday? Yep. Yeah, this past Friday, three hour SmackDown. Was they, it three? I think was it. I, I think it was just two. But uh, there were reports that it was going to be three, but it was just two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I I just I'll say this due to other obligations, I did not get a chance to watch it. I only got to see a little, tiny little bit of it. Yeah. What did you think of the new logo? It's interesting because SmackDown, like ever since it first came out, has always had like kind of a similar logo to the previous one. This one's actually a little bit different. It is. It's like, very, um, it's it's very modern. Yeah, I'll say yeah. that. I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm yeah. not saying anything bad about it. But it just, yeah, it's a, it's a new. It is. It's a new lo- new logo. Um, it is basically it. It's SmackDown except like the top is silver and bottom is blue and that that part's pretty much always been the case or like a white and blue yeah but like at the beginning it's a big s and they have the s half collared like two-tone like the top of the s is the silver bottom s is the blue and cut out like a d so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah something like that i'm I'm pulling it up right now also a uh, megan the stallion has a um performs the new theme song for SmackDown. Yeah, it's called Never Play. So there's I've seen some people online that are complaining about it. I don't know. I don't understand it. They, it yeah. They, a lot of people just want like rock or metal for these opening songs. I mean, I get it. I mean, hip hop works if it's a good song. It is. And, and and just like just like rock and roll music, if the if the wrong rock song mm-hmm. or metal song or whatever is there, it's not going to work out. Yeah, it's just not. Yeah. Um. And and trust me, I I think you can you can agree with this. My musical taste 
was shaped a little bit by watching professional wrestling, especially mm-hmm. in the early 2000s, late 90s. Yeah. And it was very rock heavy. Yeah. Um, so, like... I understand. Yeah, I understand where that comes from, but we need we need different different things. Yeah. Okay, it needs to be a little more mod- modern. And yes, the new SmackDown logo it is. It says SmackDown, and then the S is like sort of a D also, and then the top part is like a white silver, and then mm-hmm. the bottom part is blue. And now I like the USC. it. Exactly, I like it. Yeah, I think it looks kind of cool. It, it, you know, it it shows that this is going to be a brand new era. Yeah, I'm wondering if that. Raw is going to get a new logo when it goes to Netflix, and maybe a new theme. Who knows? Good, good, <laughs> good point. I actually, I actually think that might happen. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of Monday Night Raw, starting on October seventh, they will go to two hours and remain there until they make the transition to Netflix. Apparently, that was a USA Network call. Don't know why, but. Maybe it's because, you know, we're not, you know, we've already had to do this extension yeah. with you, you know, no bad blood, but like we're we're not going to, inv- we're going to start pulling out a little yeah. bit. We're not going to invest a lot of time and resources into this for that third hour. So, but apparently according to Meltzer, once they go over to Netflix, they will go back to three hours Yeah, um, and Netflix will have commercials. Yeah. Which is a new tier that Netflix is releasing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think it's six ninety nine. So Possibly, yeah. it's five ninety nine, six ninety nine, something like that. It's yeah. very cheap. But you get commercials with your Netflix subscription. So I don't know. I've I haven't had Netflix in so long that mm-hmm. I've just Kind of forget that I at one point at, I at one point had it, <laughs> yeah. but when they were starting all the the rate hikes and all that, I just saw more value in keeping Hulu for a long yeah, time, I mean, which I still have Hulu. Yeah, I, I still have Netflix, but the, yeah, the rate hikes have been annoying because I used to be on the top tier, and then they last time they rose the prices, I dropped down to the one below that. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, so Monday Night Raw will go to uh, two hours, and like I said, this like what we said, this will be until twenty twenty five. Then um, Monday Night Raw will go back to three hours on Netflix. We don't know this. This is just pure speculation, that, but there could possibly be a new theme, new logo, yeah. which only makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it, it most likely will happen. And speaking of new themes, um, <laughs> WWE is not continuing their partnership with Def Rebel. Yeah. Um, if you do not know, Def Rebel – so for you old school fans out there, <laughs> okay, or you, you – Fans around, I went. I, if you've watched WWE for years, not within the past, what would you say, ten years? When when did Jim Johnson mm, stop? I think around twenty four. Yeah, about ten years. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So so if you just if you've just recently watched WWE within yeah. start watching WWE within the past ten years, you don't know about Jim Johnston. Yeah, you might have heard a couple of his themes, like with Triple H or The Rock, but that's about it. <laughs> exactly. Just know that back in – this is going to sound so old <laughs> – back in the day, back in my day, <laughs> Jim Johnston would just be putting them out there, okay? Yeah. I mean, he is he is responsible for some of the greatest themes of all time. Mm-hmm. He's responsible for Stone Cold Steve Austin's, uh, Undertaker's. I think you mentioned on the show last week he wrote the uh, uh, the the – the game, and yeah, then, yeah, then, then Motorhead performed it. Yeah, there's a, a video of him actually like trying to sing it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, he probably, probably, yeah. yeah. But yeah, they employed Motorhead to actually record it, which which makes sense because uh, Triple H, yeah. he's a big heavy metal guy. Yeah. which again, at first, and he's friends well, was friends with the lead singer. Yeah, yeah, was he? Unfortunately, rest yeah. in peace, Lemmy. Um, and and just to go back to the people that are complaining about a hip hop song. Being the theme of SmackDown, the guy who is in charge of of everything right now is a heavy metal guy. <laughs> okay, his his look at one point because he had the handlebar mustache mm-hmm. just like Lemmy. Yeah. So you know, a heavy metal guy is like giving the thumbs up to you know <laughs> a hip hop song. Which again, there's nothing wrong with it. Leave yeah. it alone. It's actually it's it's a good song. Yeah. Leave it be. Leave it be. But yeah, Def Rebel no longer. We'll be with the company. This is coming from Cultaholic.com. Quote, the most recent era of WWE entrance music has been heavily criticized by fans, with Def Rebel being one of the more unpopular musical partners the company has ever had. End quote. Uh, Before this, it was CFO. Like CFO money. The the, the O was like in a money sign, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it was CFO, and then I think Jim Johnson was before them. Um, So, yeah, Def Rebel has taken over CFO's stuff. Yeah, Def Rebel's not 
very yeah th- their music is not the like they they've got a couple of really good ones but other than that it's I, yeah it, what it, is that Def Rebel responsible for the Bloodlines theme song which one <laughs> you mean like Roman Reigns's one uh yes yeah he he so he did Roman Reigns I think both versions I believe um he did like Bianca Belair's which I think is a great theme yeah I'm just going thumbs up on those yeah. ones um, then you for like every one of those you have a Johnny yeah. Gargano. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Gargano's <laughs> was uh, it's it's uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not the I'm not the biggest fan of it. Some I, of the some of the music, I'll just say this with Def Rebel, it just sounds very generic y. Yeah. Yeah. And he always has to throw in the person's name at the beginning. Yeah. Like it, <laughs> we don't we don't need that with yeah. everything. That was and, and again, not to go back to Jim Johnston, but that's the one thing about him was he he had so many different ways of creating a theme song. Mm-hmm. But that, at the, I mean, for a musical person, I can hear the similarities between each of his theme songs he wrote. I mean, you might be able to as well, but they were different enough that they fit the person who they were for. I'll say, yes, I will. I cannot pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like if you're a classic musician, you can hear John Williams. You can hear like all – he did Star Wars. All he did Indiana Jones. Blah blah blah. You can hear the little similarities between each film he's done. But uh, yeah, well, but again, yeah, you you have a background in yeah. music, so yeah. that's why your other nickname is is the Maestro. Yeah, and and so much so, ladies and gentlemen, that one of his is it, is it the big go- it's big, the big gold? gold? He's got the big gold belt replica. Yeah. He's got a replica of it, and his nameplate is Maestro Cole. Yeah. So yeah, that is a another thing for him. Um, <clears throat> but for me. I have a broadcasting background. Mm-hmm. I've done play-by-play. I've done color, um, commentary, course host, stuff like that. Just to give us a quick transition into our next thing. PWI, we're going to get into the 500 in the next segment. Yeah. But they went ahead and released the top 10 play-by-play and color commentators. So I'm not going to go through every single one, mainly <laughs> just the top three. For These each. are of the year, right? Yes, these are of the year. Same thing. It's from July 2023 to July 2024. Same mm-hmm. criteria. Um, number one, this is play-by-play commentators. Number one, we'll go to Michael Cole, which I I agree with that. Since Vince has <laughs> yeah. stepped away yeah. and is not in Michael Cole's ear so much in his headset, yeah. Michael Cole's been – he's able to you know be a little more – be better. I'm just saying. Yeah, that. He's, yeah. he's 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 not as he, he's a little more natural now. He mm-hmm. doesn't come off like a like a mouthpiece for yeah. the for the company. He still has some of those uh, Vince isms, as I'll call them, in there. But I yeah. think that's just ingrained in him. That is, but also Michael Cole is. I'll say this: he is such a. He's done this for so long. And he is a, a to me a, such a good broadcaster that you don't notice him as much yeah, now. Yeah. Um, it's very hard when you got somebody screaming in your ear or saying <laughs> stuff in your ear and you're trying to say what they're telling you at the same time and you're doing it live. Yeah. I wouldn't want Michael Cole's job. No. I'll just fully, fully say that. I will stick to this right here. Um, mm-hmm. Michael Cole followed by Excalibur for AEW. Excalibur, I think, has taken off the, the, broad, the broadcast team on AEW since Jim Ross has, you know, pulled back a lot on yeah. his appearances. Excalibur has sort of filled that role mm-hmm. and I to me I think he does a, he does an excellent job yeah. on on you know whichever night they throw him on but mainly he he spews out some of those scripts crazy. Oh my gosh. Like in yes. a breath it's like oh it's yeah. a lot of information. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh man, I bet you like when they're like I don't know, I don't know how he does it." Yeah. And then another one who in my opinion is Rather underrated is I don't even know who he is. Ian Riccoboni. Yeah. Uh, Ian Riccoboni is with Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Um, he so Ring of Honor. You remember all the Kevin Kelly stuff, mm-hmm. okay? Kevin Kelly at one point was the voice of Ring of Honor. Yeah. He went to New Japan. He he did his run there um, between with him and Chris Charlton and. Uh, um, who and Chris Charlton's on this list. He's number eight, but also Don Callis as his co- color commentator. He left. Ian Riccoboni took over, and sort of I don't know. It, he kind of he kind of fit that role mm. of of Ring of Honor very well. Mm. Ring of Honor's sort of, at least in my opinion, it's been always looked at as a super indie. Yeah, 
Like it's it's one of the super indies out there, air yeah. quotes. And Ian Ian Riccoboni, it says that's not a knock on him. He just he fit that role very well. Yeah. I don't know how else to say it. Hmm. So yeah, I I agree very much with the top three. Um, after Riccoboni is Tom Hannafin, former Tom Phillips. Oh, okay. W- yeah, of WWE. Um, he's with TNA. Corey Graves is number five. For WWE top five, that's your top five right there. Followed by Tony Schiavone, Vic Joseph, Vic Chris is NXT, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And then of course Schiavone is with AEW. Chris Charlton, I just mentioned him. He's with New Japan, and I don't know who these last two are. Yeah. Uh, Joe Dombrowski and Joe. Uh, Galley, yeah. I don't know uh, them. I don't watch MLW NWA. So, yeah. sorry, don't don't <laughs> don't get too mad with me. But you can catch the NWA on the CW app on Tuesdays, the free version too. So there and, you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, top ten color commentators have been released as well. Nigel McGinnis. That I don't know if you can argue too much with that one. Nigel McGinnis has shown with it, it during his time with AEW. That he is very much off the cuff. Yeah. He's very good off the top of his head. He's yeah. he's just <laughs> just. I mean, he'll say some of the most out of pocket yeah. stuff that will just get you laughing. And like current event stuff too that you won't expect. Exactly. <laughs> I would say, and don't again, don't come at me on this. <laughs> I'm not saying that he is a Bobby the Brain Heenan, but I will say he is Bobby the Heenan esque. Mm. A little bit. We'll have to talk about Nigel later, but yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we'll 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 talk about him a little more later on. Uh, it's Nigel McGinnis is number one, followed by Wade Barrett of WWE. Uh, number three, Caprice Coleman, Ring of Honor. I don't know too much about him. Nope. Um, just I would just throw that completely out there. Um, and also, yeah, it took me a second. I had to pause. I was like, Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I, I can't think at the moment. <laughs> I don't have enough caffeine. Yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't think of Bobby the Brain Heenan's name, and I'll fully admit that right now. Yeah. Um. Then you have Matthew uh, Rewalt, who is formerly of the Vaude Villains. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, for, so he is. He used he to was be. good when he was in, I think, WWE doing that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of um, between him and Tom on uh-huh. TNA. They 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 really have very good chemistry. Honestly, I would put him a. Above Caprice, because hmm. just and maybe it's because I don't know too much about yeah, Caprice, yeah. Um, but I just feel like he's just he's to me a little more a little more recognizable. I don't know. Yeah, that's the best way I could put it. Number five, Taz with AEW. Number six, who is sort of a controversial take, um, Pat McAfee. Yeah, I think I, I like McAfee. I know he can be a little on the annoying side for certain people. He was back in West Virginia recently. He was. He very much <laughs> was. Um, he was back in West Virginia. He was uh, talking about the backyard brawl yeah. from yesterday. Um, I don't understand why Neil, Neil Brown called two timeouts in the final <laughs> drive. I still, don't, I still can't figure that out. But, yeah, Pat McAfee was there. He was talking about that. So it goes Pat McAfee followed by Booker T at number seven. Um, Hugo Savinovich, yeah. Triple A, uh, number nine, Vita Scott, and then number ten, yes. Matt Menard. Who is Vita Scott? I don't recognize them. I, I don't. I don't either. Not a. I, I, uh, again, maybe they're on Collision because I don't really catch Collision often. Could be. Could be. I don't. I don't watch Collision very yeah. much either. Um, I try to catch wrestling the best I can. I yeah. Just, this is what happens when you're adulting, <laughs> and when you're adulting and you have full time yeah. jobs, yeah. and you know you can't can't watch every little thing. <laughs> but I, I do. I. I like I said, I would put Matthew above Caprice on that list. Um, maybe put Taz a little higher. I think Pat McAfee should be higher. Um, maybe a couple spots up. Um, maybe yeah, maybe keep Taz at five and then put Ma- Pat McAfee up there. I don't know. I think Pat McAfee does get some unnecessary hate sometimes, but that's yeah, me. that's that's me. That's <laughs> me. Um, anywho, so last week, as soon as the show was posted went live yeah i get on facebook and i see that first wrestling had an event in the mall of america called oh it's actually okay yeah but yeah. when i read this i thought it meant like it was the first wrestling event not that it was the promotion is called first wrestling <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you thought i had a typo in this yeah. right <laughs> so i spelled it ju- so first wrestling is spelled f uh one <laughs> not formula one but yeah. f1 rst wrestling um yeah 
Josh thought I was an idiot. I am an idiot. Well, no, I, I just thought it, meant, like, <laughs> it was the first ever show some years ago on this date. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, First Wrestling is the promotion, and they had a show there called Saturday Night Nitro huh. um, on September 7th last week at the Mall of America. Just a few days past the 29th anniversary of the very first WCW Monday Nitro <laughs> from the same venue. The first Monday Nitro was on September 4th, 1995 from huh. the Mall of America. Nice. Yeah, so a little bit of little bit of history there, and we'll get we'll get to Holy others here day, in a second. Last but, week, <laughs> so I, I, I wanted to bring this up, and we can we can touch a little bit on this, and then finish it up in the very last segment. But the what I was seeing was a lot of people talking about how great the venue looked mm-hmm. with the ring there, and you you have all the fans around it and everything. Do you feel like it doesn't matter to the company? Do you feel like companies? should utilize spaces like that more often, like promotions. Like, for example, you know, you have the Mall of America mm-hmm. or um, or, or the, the Hammerstein ball, Ballroom, you know, places places like that. Do you think that maybe? I think they should. Like, not all the time, but every once in a while, do just like a special show like that. True, it true. It brings a different vibe. It, it, it really does. Yeah. It was, you know, this is, this is very WCWS. Yeah. Um, but it, like that was the thing with like WCW Hog Wild. It was yeah. it was in South Dakota, but uh, whatever that that mm-hmm. you know motorcycle thing is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, the final nitro was kind of cool, or is that that pool or whatever? Yeah, like they have a <laughs> ring in the middle of a yeah. pool. Like I know it <laughs> doesn't seem very practical, yeah. but it, it. I I think that you know I think that certain venues like that are mm. cool. I think that they should, you know, I love hearing that, you know, whenever a promotion like GCW goes to the Hammerstein Ballroom, because I just think it's a it's a wonderful venue for mm-hmm. professional wrestling. It's one of those random venues where you're like, wow, this really this kind of works. Yeah. Like Mall of America is the same thing. Like you wouldn't walk in there and go, oh, so that's that's how this is. OK. <laughs> All right. No, you, you, you walk in, you're like, oh, wow, this really does look cool. Yeah. And maybe I don't know. Maybe it's also a nostalgia thing. Like, yeah. Um, I also I'll say this. Speaking of venues, uh, talking about we talked about it a little bit last week, but Slam Plaza being at the Slack Plaza with the lights and everything, mm-hmm. I thought was a very cool visual. Yeah, yeah. And you know, being outside and not being you know in a and there's nothing wrong with being in an arena. Yeah. Um, but I've seen my fair share of arena shows. I've seen my fair share of stadium shows. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of them are cool. I think Arthur Ashe Stadium is a very cool uh, venue that does not get used for professional wrestling a lot. I don't know. I well, think AEW's the only ones that done it. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. they are the only uh, wrestling promotion that has done it. So we're going to go ahead and stop it right there. We are going to uh, go ahead and do On This Day in Wrestling History. September 15th, 1995, WCW. We're talking about them a little bit. Yeah. Fires Steve Austin. Austin was out with How a... How dare they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this this aged like uh, milk. Um, he was out with a triceps injury at the time when he was sent his termination notice via FedEx mail. Eric Bischoff, vice president of WCW at the time, reportedly didn't see Austin as a marketable performer. Jokes on you. Yeah, that again, <laughs> that aged like milk. Yeah. Um, now, th- of course, a few things had to happen for Stone Cold to become Stone Cold. Yeah. Um, he was stunning Steve Austin at the time. So yeah, he it, had hair. He did. He had <laughs> hair at that point. Um, but of course, he goes over to WWE, becomes the ringmaster, and then eventually he just shaves the rest of his head, and he's like, hey, you know, then yeah. Stone Cold. Slowly started to. He famously won the uh, King of the Ring and basically became Stone Cold then. Exactly. The infamous, uh, well, famous, infamous, yeah. however you look at it, Austin 316 line. September 15th, 1998, Jacqueline defeated Sable on Monday Night Raw to win the vacant WWF Women's Championship. The first champion since the belt was infamously thrown in the trash by Medusa on WCW Nitro. Then, finally, on September 15th, 2019, WWE presented Clash of Champions pay-per-view. The Clash of Champions pay-per-view. In a unique situation, Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman went into the event as defending Raw Tag Champions, but also had to face each other for Rollins' 
a universal title in the main event. The team of Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler the captured, dirty dogs. Yes, captured the tag titles from the battling duo, and Rollins successfully defended against Strowman. The only other time ti- the only other title change saw the revival dethrone the New Day for the SmackDown tag titles. I wonder, I wonder what the revival's doing today. I don't know. I don't know. They uh, uh, actually they uh, I saw something between them and the uh, uh, Outrunners. Uh-huh. One collision. <laughs> I saw something. So it, again, they they put off the same kind of vibe. Have you seen the Outrunners? I have. I've seen they're, some of the vignettes. They're they're very much an '80s throwback. Very much. Very. <laughs> they were actually at a Pro Wrestling Conquest recently. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. See, there you go. That, locally, that's yeah. that's a local show. We'll get to that in the next segment. We're going to stop it right there. And when we come back, we will have the PWI 500, the top five, and just our thoughts on it. Stay tuned. It's time for more of the grill out. Here's Hollywood Jeff Page. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Grill Out. I am your host, Hollywood, Jeff Petty, and I'm joined... (laughs) (laughs) I am joined by the current reigning and defending Grill Out Predictions champion, Josh Cole. Bye-bye. Yeah. Gets a loan at the top. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does while you look down on the rest of us peasants. (laughs) Anyway, so PWI released their annual top 500, the PWI 500. Um, The criteria for that, I said it in the previous segment, I'll say it again. It is from July 2023 to July 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the criteria we are looking at. We talked about, this is the crazy thing about us being doing this for a year. I remember remember last year when we were talking about this same subject. Mm -hmm. So... Seeing Tyrus on like whatever number he was being above other people, like what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We, we'll, you know what? I got to pull it up. We'll see where Tyrus uh, if he ranks. I don't. Even I don't. Know. Yeah, I don't. Has he been performing this year? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I got the top five hundred pulled up right here. I'll go ahead and give you the top ten, and I agree with most of it. Yeah. Keyword: most of it. Um, number one: Cody Rhodes. Number two: Swerve Strickland. Number three: Will Ospreay. Number four, Seth, I'll say it, freaking Rollins. <laughs> Seth Rollins. Number five, Tessa Unito. Number six, Damian Priest. Number seven, MJF. Number eight, John Moxley. Number nine, Gunter. And number 10, Mystico. That is the top 10 for the PWI, PWI 500. Hmm. Um, thoughts? Might move Gunter up a little bit. I'm trying to remember who Mystico is. Uh, Mystico used to be. I don't know if it's the same. It, it was at one point Sin Cara. Okay, but I don't know if it's the same Sim. I don't think it is. So hold on, you go ahead. I'm I'm looking. We have computers in front of us. Yeah. Uh, let's see. MJF. I don't. I don't. I mean, he missed like a few months, so it's it's hard for me to want to place him that high. True. I mean, granted, he did do well. From July last year to December as being world champion, but I don't know if I'd play, still place him that high. Yeah, um, uh, maybe still top ten, but maybe closer to the ten spot. Uh, let's see. I, I can't really say much on Tetsuya Naito because I don't really watch New Japan other than I, when I, they collaborate with AEW. Yeah, I, I like Naito. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he should be that high, mm. mainly because New Japan, and this may just be me. New Japan, to me now, does not have the same pull, the mm. same influence that New Japan had, say, back in 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that I would I would not argue against because I think Kazuchika Okada was number one one of those mm. years. So I wouldn't argue with that whatsoever. Yeah. But Tetsuya Naito being that high, I think he should be in the top ten, but I don't think he should be in the top five. I'll say that. Uh, top ten, but not top yeah. five. I think if Rollins did not get injured and could have been more consistent this year, like 2024, maybe in the number four spot, but I'd probably bump him down a little bit because he did miss a lot due to injury. But, I mean, his time in 2023 as world champion was great. Um, Like, if he had that same amount of time or active time this year as he did last year, yeah, I think number four would be a good spot for him. Yeah. But I'd probably bump him down a couple of spots just because of his time off he had. True, true, true. Um, I'm seeing right now, Mystico is is Sinkara. 
The formerly okay. known Sin the, the, Cara. The, the real Sin Cara. I think so, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Debuted in 1998. Um, Mystico, da, 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 better known by his ring name, Mystico, is a Mexican luchador or a masked wrestler. I don't, I can't pronounce all the words. Um, <laughs> he cur- who currently works for CMLL, uh, where he is the current NWA World Historic Metal- Middleweight Champion. In his first reign, he also makes appearances for partner promotions AEW and Major League Wrestling, where he is the current MLW World Middleweight Champion. In his first reign, initially working as Mystico, he later signed with WWE, where he was known under the name Sin Cara. Upon his return to Mexico, he worked under the name Mizitiz. Uh, in AAA <laughs> before settling on the ring name Caristico upon returning to CMLL in 2015. In 2021, he regained the Mystico name due to his successor and tag team partner Mystico 2 leaving CMLL. Hmm. So, it looks like that, yes, it is the formerly known as Sin Cara. Um, so, yeah. Uh, they don't have his uh, PWI thing up here yet. But, yeah, so uh, number 10 is Sin Cara, Mystico. It's Mystico now, but, yes, for okay. you, WWE. For people that have only seen him, seen him in WWE. Yeah. Um, I, I don't watch too much Luchador wrestling. Although, or, although those any. who have seen him in WWE, there were two Sin Caras. But he, I'm pretty sure this is the second one, right? Uh, I think the first one, actually. Oh, the first one. Okay. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a real one and a fake one. I can't remember which yeah. is which. <laughs> yeah. This one, uh, this is the the Sin Cara that, okay, let's see. I guess technically they're both the real ones, but who portrayed him rather? Yeah. Yeah. This is, no, this is the OG okay. Sin Cara. Yeah. This is this is who he is. Because uh, there was, yeah, there was a feud with the other Sin Cara. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Interesting how he's NWA <clears throat> champion. like. NWA has, like, titles and a couple other promotions. I'm kind of curious, do they still, like, recognize them as in, like, Does the NWA today still recognize those titles, or are they just kind of there? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, let's get Billy Corgan on the phone yeah. and ask him. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Gunther, I, I fully agree, should be higher up this list. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a hellacious reign with the Intercontinental yeah. title. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just was. And yes, he's very hot now. And and I know that the criteria for this ended what a couple months ago. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is. But I still think Gunther should be up higher. And his favorite wrestler, Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> the fact he said that to Brett. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, Gunther should be up higher. I fully agree with the top four. The top four I don't have any any arguments with. Um, Seth Rollins has sort of been the workhorse that WWE has needed. Mm-hmm. Um, he's pretty much filled in the gaps that Roman left. And I'm, that's not a knock on Roman. He just he doesn't wrestle as much as he used to. He's, yeah. he's sort of, he has that He has that Brock Lesnar thing now. Yeah. He, he comes in on special occasions. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, hey, you, you get up that eye up the cards, you put in that much work, you are rightfully deserve it. I'm yeah. not going to argue with that. Um, Will Ospreay, he's, you know, he was easily the, in North America and over in Europe, he was the West pretty much. He was the more recognizable name out of New Japan. Then he comes over to AEW and he has kind of been on a tear over in AEW um, with all of the, you know, with everything that he's been doing there. Swerve Strickland, I've been saying it. Yeah, I have been saying that he is top ten, top five, top yeah. three now, top two actually. Osprey's a. I'm not 100 percent convinced. I'm like he's good, but sometimes I don't care for some of the stuff he does. Like he sometimes no sell stuff, like it's nothing. I'm just, eh. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. So what? Maybe Rollins in front of Osprey, just switch those two around. Possibly. I don't know. But so okay, do you agree with Cody being number one? I think it's up between him and Swerve. It's yeah, like he's been great. He's basically a workhorse, just like Rollins was. But like his reign since WrestleMania up to when this would have ended has been kind of eh. Yeah. So, but he, him, and Swerve had the same um, thing after they won the title. Yeah, they, their their reigns became kind of meh. After yeah. that, it was more of the chase, yeah, than the actual, uh, than the actual reign. Yeah, um, I would, I'll say this, and this is my argument for Cody being number one. He won the the undisputed title mm-hmm. 
in April. Yeah. Swerve didn't win his until June. It was April. Was Wait, it no. April? No, he's Dynasty. Yeah, it was April because Dynasty, yeah. Yeah. It was r- uh, right after. What? Yeah, because WrestleMania was early April and Dynasty was like. Oh, let me double check that. Uh, yeah, we got computers. I'm pretty we... sure Dynasty was like late I, April. Are you. I'm. It may have been. I know that that was when they, when they when AEW came through town. I did get a sweet shot of Swerve looking yeah. at the dynasty. April twenty first. Okay, so Cody won his early April. Uh, Swerve won his late April. Um, Cody st- Cody still has his title. Yeah, but Swerve just recently lost his. Yeah. So he still was champion when the criteria ended. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. Maybe it's because Cody is just. It, I don't know. I, I I I'm okay with it. it. Maybe it helps that we're WWE's so hot right now. And that's then, that's what I was getting ready yeah. to say. And he's like, I, I don't exactly know where he's at merchandise wise, but he's probably up there as one of the top in WWE. That's true. And again, I've I've been screaming it on the show about Swerve. Yeah, like I just <laughs> I, I, top ten in the <laughs> world. I will I will keep saying that. And it's validated right there. Exactly. <laughs> um I was right. <laughs> I wasn't right about other predictions that I made for this year. We'll get to that in December. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll, we're we're going to bring all of those back. You yeah, were right about the world champion part though, so hey. Yeah, uh, I got I got a, I think I got a couple right. I didn't get uh, Yeah, I've got a couple right too, but a couple wrong as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got our got our fair share right and wrong. Um, number 11, uh, first person outside of, of the top 10 is Samoa Joe. Okay. Um, so goes uh, Samoa Joe at 11, Sami Zayn at number 12, Drew McIntyre at 13, Brian Danielson 14, Moose at 15. Hmm. 16 is Sonata, New Japan. 17, Jey Uso. 18, Hijo Del Vikingo. Okay. Um, number 19, Mustafa Ali. And number 20, Eddie Kingston. Okay. 21, Kazuchika Okada. 22, Nick Nemeth. 23, Alex Shelley. 24, Orange Cassidy. 25, Alex Kane. Hmm. And then Adam Copeland at 26. L.A. Knight, 27, Trick Williams. 28, Christian Cage. 29, and Ilya Dragunov at number 30. So, that is the top 30. Where's Tyrus? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to know where Joe Hendry is? 50. Wow, you are very close. <laughs> 51. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you were very close on that one. Um, I would, well, he, yeah, number, yeah. He's, I, I think that's a decent spot because he really became popular here in the last, like, five or so months. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Re- really in the past month. Yeah. Like, couple, past couple months he has mm-hmm. gotten, like, he's been on fire yeah. with with, uh, with everything. Um, let's see. I'm looking for Tyrus. Where you at, buddy? If <laughs> he made it. <laughs> uh, Hook is at 83. Will Yuta, 86. Daniel Garcia, 87. Chris Jericho, 90. Chad Gable at 89. Mm. Um, Jacob Fatu, 94. Uh, Darby Allen, 97. Oh, that's a, uh, Def Rebel speaking of earlier. The theme he did for Jacob Fatu, assuming he did his theme, is really good. He could do good work. Yeah, yeah. And just, I guess just not a lot. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura, 109, 110. Jay White. Um, Jeff Gobb, 121. Effie is at 122. Um, let's see. Ray Phoenix, 135. Um, do, 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 do. Bronson Reed, 144. <laughs> Alexander Hammerstone, who just debuted on NXT the other yep. night, one fifty four. Okay. Um, to, to, to Joey Janela, one sixty five. Um, to, 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 to Dalton Castle, one seventy one. Sheamus, one seventy two. Yeah, Oba Femi on there. He faced Hammerstone this past week, was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking. I'm only in the high 100 Nick Wayne at 190 El Fantasma 189 Powerhouse Hobbs 186 Pete Dunn I don't know if I put Powerhouse that on there yeah. see I haven't really seen much of him at all this like past few months yeah I don't know um Pete Dunn 195 hmm. Bobby Lashley 197 Andrade 196 uh da, 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 da. 
Let's see. Ultima Guerrero, 218. Dragon Lee, 219. Katsuri Shibata, 221. Eric Young, 227. Hmm. Uh, Psycho Clown, Triple uh, A, I think. Um, 237. Kyle O'Reilly, 239. Hmm. Hologram at 247. Already? Yeah, huh. I don't know about that. Good, but I don't... Oh. Well, who was he before he was hologram? I, I, I don't. Yeah, know. I have no <laughs> idea. That's a uh... because he he just like what a month or two ago debuted his hologram. Yeah, so I don't I, I don't know who who hologram who is hologram. I know the wrestler, <laughs> but who is behind the mask? Yeah. Um. Jonathan Gresham two seventy six. Kofi Kingston at two eighty seven. The Miz at two eighty one. TJP two ninety, Jack Vaughn at three hundred, hmm. um, da, 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 da. Flip Gordon at three thirteen. Has Flip even? I haven't seen a whole lot out of Flip. I haven't heard from Flip Gordon since all in the original all in. Yeah, <laughs> three thirteen is where he's ranked. Yeah. Shelton Benjamin three eighteen. Um, let's see. Uh, he was Aramis. Aramis. Hologram was Aramis, and he uh. Was in AAA, okay, and the International Wrestling Revolution Group. Mm. He was. He also participated in uh, an event for a pro wrestling gorilla. Mm. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> uh, Dustin Rhodes at three ninety three. Let's see, Cheeseburger four oh eight. He was recently here in West Virginia. Uh, I think this past weekend. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. He was. We we talked about it last week. So I'm, I'm looking <clears> at Hologram's <throat> Wikipedia page, which, I mean, it, yeah. So it, it stops his early career at 2019, and then there's nothing until his signing until All Elite Wrestling. <laughs> so it's like, uh, okay. I, yeah. I don't I don't know. I'm sure there's more there, but it's... Kayfabe. Kayfabe. Yeah. Um, Maki Ito at 456. <laughs> She, wait, she's on the men's list, or yes. is this just okay? Well, no. Remember last year, we, so you, you do have the PWI yeah. women's two hundred and fifty, yeah. But like, they make it seem like they're separate. But there's yeah. women that will pop up on the PWI five hundred, <laughs> which doesn't make this. Yeah. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense at that point. Yeah, because why would you not integrate both of them? Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I I don't under, understand that at all. I don't know. <clears throat> And I could be looking over somebody. I, I very much could. I mean, there's 500 names here. Yeah. Um, number 500 memes, also known as Blue Cane. Oh. He can't call himself Blue Cane anymore yeah. Yeah. due to copyright reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's number 500. Um, <clears throat> notable, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Notable exclusion, Tyrus. <laughs> I don't see Tyrus <laughs> anywhere. Uh, Jason, if you're listening to this, Tyrus ain't on here. <laughs> can't find him. GPA. <laughs> I don't know who GPA is. <laughs> Four thirty. <laughs> okay, that's the other thing. Like, what? Like, looking at this list, it's always fun to find like names. Like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know who this yeah. is. Um, it's just a funny name. Just a funny, funny name. Is this the PWI like <laughs> staff who does this, or is this, like fan yeah. voted? Okay, it's it's the PWI. So so um, I listened to them. Uh, they were on a <clears throat> busted open radio last year talking about it, uh -huh. and. What it is is a bunch of them get together, like a bunch of the journal, like wrestling journalists get together, and they hash out this list. That'd be crazy. Like, that's a that's a lot of wrestling to have to watch. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, I guess what it is is like a lot of people they bring their own like preset list, okay. and they just kind of hash them out. At that point, um, it really gets into contest contesting. Uh, like, it gets kind of hairy when you get to the top ten. Yeah, that's when people apparently start. Voicing their opinions, yeah. like this is why I want this person here, especially the number one spot. Like that one gets argued about a lot. Yeah, um, I'm sure the fact is like, okay, yeah, there's a lot of wrestling. There's also a lot of wrestling that we don't even know about or haven't seen. It's like I wonder if they <laughs> even get into that. You ever heard of Big Fudge? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Four o <-0 -2. laughs> Big Fudge. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> I don't know. Alex Cologne, uh, the, the Sunny Kiss, three seventy two. Um, yeah, no, there's a Pretty Boy Smooth, 362, hmm. uh, Psycho Mike, 363, uh, let's see, Ricky Starks, 352, Okay. Um, let's see, Dirty Dango, 344. Oh, that's Fandango, okay, yeah. Yep. Um, 
I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't. Jack Cartwheel, three twenty-seven. And we're not making fun of. <laughs> we're not making fun of your names. It's just uh, the Tuck Man. I don't know what that is. Three twenty-three. Um, oh my. Yeah. Uh, Kill Switch, three seventeen. Okay. Um, let's see. Carrie and Cross, three twelve. Mm. Malcolm Monroe the third, three ten. Storm Grayson, three o eight. Rhino, three o seven. Huh. He'll be, uh, we, he's actually going to be coming up in the uh, main event. We're going to mention him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Xavier Woods, 299. Hmm. Uh, Tom Lawler, 295. Uh, let's see. We've got Kofi Lance Archer, 275. Jonathan Gresham, 276. Great O'Con, 272. Yeah. It's uh, Eddie Edwards, 256. Austin Theory, 257. Johnny Gargano, 259. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, I don't know. uh, This is, yeah, this is a big list to put together. (laughs) Like, there's a lot of, like, you've got to watch. We, that's the thing on this show, we love pro wrestling. Yeah. Like, the three of us do. That's kind of, when when the three of us were in college together, that's kind of what brought us together was professional wrestling, especially you and I when we were with um, good old LifeBridge AmeriCorps. Get it done. Yeah. yeah. Don't do it. Get things done. Yeah. What's this Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Life Bridge AmeriCorps. Yeah. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. You, you, no, do, no, do, no, you, you do AmeriCorps. <laughs> don't do AmeriCorps. <laughs> do AmeriCorps. But don't, don't wear, do I mean, don't wear that logo anywhere but on your job site. Yeah. It's not a job site. What is it called? Service site. Or Service whatever. site. Yeah. Any job. I, I, haven't, I haven't done it in six years. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. But yeah, like there, you've got to watch a lot of yeah. wrestling. Like I love pro wrestling, but mm-hmm. I've also mentioned on the show about my love for NASCAR and you know like football and stuff. So, and we're getting ready to go into playoffs for the for baseball season. So, I mean, I watch. That's what I mean. I watch it. I catch it where I can. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah. Uh. But yeah, you've got to be got to be dedicated. Shane Taylor. I mean, it's like, it's like okay, you got WWE three, four times a week. AEW three, four times a week. Might be four because it's new Shockwave. Whatever, yeah, one. allegedly. Yeah. There's, a, there's a new show. Then you got oh. uh, TNA, ROH, NWA, New Japan, R- uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, that's a lot of wrestling. Plus, they're going like indie stuff, too. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, we're not knocking anybody. Yeah. You know, go for it. It's a lot. It is. It is a <laughs> lot. Um, I know that Ivy would probably want to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sat there and had yeah. wrestling on the television all the time. Um, <laughs> sometimes I do, mm-hmm. but there's other times I don't. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, and I'm not knocking anybody that does it that is like this. And don't get me wrong, we do. We love professional wrestling. If we did it, we wouldn't. The show wouldn't even be a thing. <laughs> trust, trust me. Yeah. The show wouldn't be a thing if we didn't like it. <laughs> um, there's somebody out there listening to that laughing because they know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, Jake something, 147. Mike Santana, 146. Uh, Frankie Kassarian, 130. Hmm. AJ Francis, 126. Hiroki Goto, 120. Uh, let's see. Jeff Cobb, 121. AJ Styles, he's up here. I know he is. Yeah, he hasn't done a whole lot. I'm just curious. Uh, he's, he's been off a bit. Go Shiyazaki, 82. He's with um, Pro Wrestling Noah. Um, Mance Warner, 79. He does a lot of local shows around here. Mm. Um, yeah, the Jake something you just mentioned. He did a recent, uh, I think it was at Conquest recently. Yeah, Conquest does good stuff. I mean, they're, they're, it's a thing also around here. There's a lot of good wrestling. Yeah. There really is. All right, so that's the PWI 500. Um, let's see, Jack Perry, 59. AJ Styles, 56. Okay. Uh, Randy Orton, 55. Mm. Uh, Oba... Femi, is that who you're yeah, asking yeah, for? Yeah. 53. Okay. Um, yeah, I just didn't pay attention to the top 50 very much. Oh, but Femi's about to become the longest running NXT North American champion. Yep. Rey Mysterio, 45. Uh, let's see. Da-da-da. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I got right now. All right. So, that's the PWI 500. Go out there and check it out. Yeah. Now, we have the main event. Well, it looks like we've had enough talk. It's time for the main event. All right. 
the main event, where we go ahead and let you know what the upcoming week is going to look like for you for professional wrestling nationally and locally and sometimes internationally. Yeah. Just like we said before, there's a lot of wrestling. There really is. Um, <clears throat> as far as nationally, it is pretty much the the, the same this week. You've got Monday Night Raw. Tuesday will be NXT. Wednesday will be Dynamite. Thursday will be Impact and Ring of Honor. Yeah, TNA. Tuesday is also NWA as well. Uh, Thursday is? Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday is also, yeah, you mentioned that before, on the CW, CW app. Yeah, the app. Yep, that'll be on Tuesday. We're not getting paid by them, we just yeah. know this information. Uh, Friday will be SmackDown and Rampage, and then Saturday will be Collision. Yes. That's six days of professional wrestling. Yes. Uh, <laughs> nothing nothing wrong with that, but yeah, that's what your uh, week looks like for national wrestling. Locally, we have... Oh, SmackDown is on USC. Oh, yes. And, and actually, all of WWE is on USC until October 1st. Yes, that is when uh, NXT will go over to the CW. Channel. Yes, the, the actual channel, the CW, CW, not the app, just the channel. Yeah. Um, uh, Monday Night Raw, like I said, starting October 7th. We'll go down to two hours um, until they switch over to Netflix. And, yes, SmackDown is now on the USA Network. Um, it's still two hours. Locally, we got a small batch of shows this upcoming week. Next week's going to be a packed one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you say? Eight promotions, 11 shows? Yep. Yep. We got a lot next week. So, locally, this is what it looks like. Um, Appalachian Championship Wrestling will be at the Barbersville Fall Fest presenting Autumn Armageddon. Love that name. <laughs> located in downtown Barbersville, West Virginia. This is a free show with a bell time of 12 p.m. noon and will feature extreme championship wrestling legends Rhino and the franchise Shane Douglas. Yeah. Real Shoot Wrestling. Door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Real Shoot Wrestling will be in Clarksburg, West Virginia at the Harrison County Parks and Recreation Complex, presenting the return of the Mind Eraser, which will feature the return of Remy LaVey to RSW. He will be challenging Vance Desmond for the RSW Internet Championship. This is a free event with a bell time of 7 o'clock. Yeah. And that is what your upcoming week for professional wrestling looks like. There was a show from Big Time Wrestling scheduled for this weekend, but I think they may have rescheduled it because I can't they, find yeah, the post. Yeah, anymore. I think they did. They I don't. They haven't announced that something yeah. did come up with them. They okay. did have a show. They are rescheduling yeah. it. There, nothing's been announced yet. So that is the main event. When we come back, we'll go ahead and give our final thoughts on um, everything that we just talked about. Yeah. So stay tuned. Once again, here's Hollywood Jeff Petty. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Grill Out. My name is Hollywood Jeff Petty. I'm your host, and I'm joined by The Grill Out Predictions heavyweight champion. I just keep adding words to it. Yeah. Josh Cole. The GOP champion. That's right. I said it. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, he did. He's, he likes to say that a lot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that I, was I'm the— I'm curious if anyone hates that. I know. Yeah, you're working heel. Working yeah. Heel. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of heels, it's, okay. to, it's oh, yeah, now right. on Netflix. I've been wanting to watch a show. It's a show that was on Stars, I believe. It, uh, uh, oh, was it that or Showtime? I think it was Showtime. Yeah, one of those. But uh, yeah, it had Stephen Amell, who's you know famous for like being Arrow on the DC shows. Yeah, it didn't uh, didn't CM Punk have something to do yep. with that? And, like... and, yeah, he's on that show a bit, mm -hmm. and so is AJ Lee. Oh, really? Yeah, I think her role is a bit smaller, but yeah, she's on there as well. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah, know It that. had two seasons, got canceled, but now it is on Netflix. I've been wanting to see it, so now I can see it. <laughs> okay. Also coming up on Netflix, September 25th, will be the Vince, Mr. McMahon yeah. documentary. Yeah. It will be six one-hour episodes being mm. released. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, allegedly, WWE is not too happy with it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Um, again, not, not a knock on WWE. I do enjoy their documentaries, but you have to understand that it's from a WWE perspective. Yeah. It's not from the – I don't want to say actual perspective, but it, it's coming from their point of view. It's not coming from yeah. the general Like this point one of view. started with WWE involvement, and then now it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now WWE is not involved with yeah. it. I am interested, though, in it. Yeah. And between that and now you're telling me Hills is going to be on there. Mm -hmm. Monday Night Raw is going to go on Netflix. I may – I most likely am going to sign up for Netflix here yeah. very soon just so I can catch all of this. Netflix really getting into the wrestling game. Yeah. So and they're expanding their library a lot too cuz they they used to only have like a couple of like AMC shows. Mm -hmm. Like they only had just The Walking Dead. 
But yeah. now they're actually adding their spinoffs on there too, which I've been wanting to see. So that's oh, great wow. too. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that was the uh, that that was the our new format. Yeah, that was the this is the end of our our first show under the new format. Um, let us know what you think of it. Let us know what you think of the PWI five hundred. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts? Did you find Tyrus? I can't find Tyrus. <laughs> You can email us, thegrillout95 at gmail.com. You can also message us on Facebook. We've been getting a lot of engagement over there. Yeah. Um, we And we very much enjoy that. We like the engagement. We like the shout-outs from people. We like to give people shout-outs. We definitely like to point out where the local wrestling is. Mm-hmm. Um, and for anybody out there that's like, hey, you know, you're, you're listening to this on 1490 AM, WSWW, you're just flipping through channels on the radio, and you're you're hearing me talk. And you're like, hey, I've been thinking about this going and seeing professional wrestling. Go, go to a local show. Yeah, okay? a lot of them are free too. So yeah, we we just told you two free uh, mm-hmm. ones for this upcoming week: Appalachian Championship Wrestling in Barbersville, and then Real Shoot Wrestling in Clarksburg. Mm-hmm. That's two free shows that you can go to. And just so you know, independent wrestling is a lot more in a per- lot more uh, up front. Yeah, a lot more I want intimate I'll say that mm-hmm. a lot more intimate than you would find with AEW WWE uh, even Ring of Honor who it, well travels with a, uh, with AEW but yeah MLW uh, TNA even you 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 know go support local wrestling yeah go support independent promotions the wrestlers typically will have their own gimmick table set up Go get you go get you some merchandise. Yeah. Okay. Go support them. And if you ever wanted to see a War Games match live, ASW is done in November. Yes, yeah. and they announced that Dan Housen's yeah. going to be there. <laughs> yeah. I guess Dan Housen is going to be doing a tour through a uh, yeah. um, through through West Virginia here soon, <laughs> which I am very much loving. Yeah. Dan Housen's awesome. Um, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, go like the Facebook page, and until next time, <laughs> fellow wrestling fans. Oh, one more thing. One more thing before I leave. Go listen to the Grill Out Hot Tag. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is exclusively, it will not be on uh, Terrestrial Radio if you're listening to this on 1490 AM. It will not be here. It is on um, whatever podcasting platform you prefer. Yeah. Okay? Or YouTube. It'll be on both of them. So it's called the Grill Out Hot Tag, episode one, the, the Muda Scale. Yes, the Muda Scale. And until next time, fellow wrestling fans, have a good one. Good night.